Welcome to the Daily Bible Reader Podcast. I am your host, Rakia Collins, and the mission of this podcast is to read the Bible from beginning to end every single year, starting in 2024. If that mission sounds interesting to you, I'd encourage you to grab your Bible and read along with me. On today's episode of the Daily Bible Reader, we are going to be reading Exodus chapter 17 through Exodus chapter 19. So picking up with Exodus chapter 17, water from the rock. And all the congregation of the people of Israel moved on from the wilderness of sin by stages according to the commandment of the Lord and camped at Rephaim, but there was no water for the people to drink. Therefore, the people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. And Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people grumbled against Moses and said, Why did you bring us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children? in our livestock with thirst. So Moses cried to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, Pass on before the people, taking with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock of Horab, and you shall strike the rock, and water shall come out of it, and the people will drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel, and he called the name of the place Massah and Meribah because of the quarreling of the people of Israel, and because they tested the Lord by saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Israel defeats Amalek. Then Amalek came and fought with Israel at Rephaim. So Moses said to Joshua, Choose for us men and go out and fight with Amalek. Today I will stand on the top of the mountain with the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses told him and fought with Amalek. While Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill, Whenever Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed, and whenever he lowered his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands grew weary, so they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it while Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on one side and the other on the other side. So his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua overwhelmed Amalek and his people with the sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this as a memorial in a book and recite it in the ears of Joshua, that I will utterly blot out the memory of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it, The Lord is my banner, saying, A hand upon the throne of the Lord. The Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. So chapter 17, the first thing I just want to openly admit is that in my life, I have been an Israelite, like put me on the list. I've, I've been, I've done it. God has been great to me. He's been excellent to me. And then in a different season in my life, when things might not have been going the way that I thought that they should go immediately there's the complaints and there's the, where is God? Why isn't he here? There's all this extra stuff. But to just forget that he was just with you, come on, girl. Like, that's how I have to talk to myself. So I'm not telling you that you need to talk to yourself like that, but I'm sure that there have been times in all of our lives where God has done something, but it may not have been Um, you know, in the next season, it may not have been in the time that we wanted it to be done or with the sense of urgency that we felt that it should have been done in. And at that point, 
you know, we're just like, we're over it. We're like complaining, we're upset and we're angry. And what I find so interesting is that I used to always like hear about, you know, the Israelites in church and about the complaining and the grumbling against Moses. But it's different when you kind of read the story end to end. And it's like, you guys really should have nothing to complain about. Like how we went through and we read the plagues and it's like, why are you guys complaining? And I know that, again, thinking back to myself, if, if I look back over my life and I was looking at my life and, you know, a different view, it's like, Rikia, why were you complaining about so much? And so that's really what I got from chapter 17, really overall, that we should be mindful of our mindset. We need to always, no matter if it's not happening in the time that we want it to happen in, we need to always be grateful and always give thanks to God for everything that he's done for us. Chapter 18, Jethro's Advice. Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, heard of all that God had done for Moses and for Israel, his people, how the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt. Now Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, had taken Zephora, Moses' wife, after he had sent her home, along with her two sons. The name of the one was Gershom, for he said, I have been a sojourner in a foreign land. And the name of the other was Elizer, for he said, The Lord of my father was my help and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came with his sons and his wife to Moses in the wilderness where he was encamped at the mountain of God. And when he sent word to Moses, I, your father-in-law Jethro, am coming to you with your wife and her two sons with her. Moses went out to meet his father-in-law and bowed down and kissed him. And they asked each other of their welfare and went into the tent. Then Moses told his father-in-law all that the Lord had done to Pharaoh and to the Egyptians for Israel's sake, all the hardship that had come upon them in the way and how the Lord had delivered them. And Jethro rejoiced for all the good that the Lord had done to Israel, in that he had delivered them out of the hand of the Egyptians. Jethro said, Blessed be the Lord who has delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of Pharaoh and has delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. Now I know that the Lord is greater than all gods because in this affair they dealt arrogantly with the people. And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, brought a burnt offering and sacrifices to God, and Aaron came with all the elders of Israel to eat bread with Moses' father-in-law before God. The next day, Moses sat to judge the people, and the people stood around Moses from morning till evening. When Moses' father-in-law saw that all he was doing for the people he said, what is this that you're doing for the people? Why do you sit alone and all the people stand before you from morning till evening? And Moses said to his father-in-law, because the people come to me to inquire of God when they have a dispute, they come to me and I decide between one person and another and I make them know the statutes of God and his laws. Moses' father-in-law said to him, What you are doing is not good. You and the people with you will certainly wear yourselves out, for the thing is too heavy for you, and you are not able to do it alone. Now, obey my voice. I will give you advice, and God be with you. You shall represent the people before God and bring their cases to God, and you shall warn them about the statutes and the laws, and make them know the way in which they must walk and what they must do. 
Moreover, look for able men from all the people, men who fear God, who are trustworthy and hate a bribe, and place such men over the people as chiefs of thousands, of hundreds, of fifties, and of tens. Let them judge the people at all times. They shall decide themselves. And let them judge the people at all times. Every great matter they shall bring to you, but any small matter they shall decide among themselves. So it will be easier for you, and they will bear the burden with you. If you do this, God will direct you. You will be able to endure, and all this people also will go to their place in peace. So Moses listened to the voice of his father in law and did all that he had said. Moses chose able men out of Israel and made them heads of the people, chiefs of thousands, of hundreds, of fifties, and of tens. And they judged the people at all times. Any hard case they brought to Moses, but any small matter they decided among themselves. Then Moses let his father in law depart, and he went away to his own country. Okay. So, chapter 18, man, it's so like jam packed. I honestly love the fact that Moses' father, Jethro, kind of came back on the scene for this one. It just really made things like interesting because up until this point, the Bible's really been like focusing on Moses and all that he's done for the Israelites to the point where, at least from me and my perspective, it kind of took some of the humanity, if you will, away from Moses. And it's just like Moses is just there for everyone. Moses is just a superhero. And so it's really good to kind of see Moses and, you know, his own family interactions. And so what I love, the first thing I love about this is that it comes from chapter 18, verses 10 through 12. And here's where Jephro says, Blessed be the Lord who has delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of Pharaoh and has delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. Now I know that the Lord is greater than all gods because in this affair, they dealt arrogantly with the people. And what I love about this is that it really speaks to why our testimony and why being vocal about your faith and about what you believe is so important. Because we see in this example, Moses is positively impacting the beliefs of his father-in-law. So now that Moses has really shared his testimony with his father-in-law, his father-in-law says, now I know that there's only like one God in all of the land above all the other gods. And I think that that's huge. And that's why, you know, spreading your faith and telling people about what you believe in is incredibly, incredibly important. The next thing I want to dive into really is just like the rest of this chapter from verse 13 all the way to the end. So we see here in verses 10 through 12 that as we just talked about, Jethro really got his first introduction to God. And then we see now the the roles are kind of flipped, if you will. And Jethro is giving Moses advice about how to lead the people. And I, I always found this, and I say always, but again, guys, this is my second time reading the Bible from end to end for myself. Um, and so I find it interesting that Jethro was the person to be able to tell Moses what you're doing is not good. Because if you think about it, who else was going to tell Moses that information? Everyone else was eating and surviving and getting knowledge and nourishment off of the relationship that God had with Moses. And because Moses was really stretching himself thin and they were eating and they were being satisfied and they were being filled. That's all they really cared about. And it took Jethro, an outsider from an Israelite perspective, since he wasn't among the people, it took him to come into the situation and say, 
what you're doing is not good. Like you're going to wear yourself out. And if God, listen, I'm going to tell you what I think you should do. But Jethro had the wisdom to say, listen, you take this and God be with you. And he begins to break down the fact that Moses needs to essentially have committees and have these committees of trusted, structured men, have them take on the small affairs, the things that aren't necessarily big enough to really warrant your attention. So that way you're not worn out and you're not stretched too thin as you're trying to do the best that you can to lead these people and to really be the conduit between these people and God. And I just, I love the way that this is framed because Jethro, again, being new and having this new exposure to God is able to give his advice with the wisdom to say, God be with you. Let me tell you what I have to tell you. And it seems to have gone very, very well. So much so that we see in verse 24, the Bible says, So Moses listened to the voice of his father-in-law and did all he had said. Verse 25, Moses chose able men out of all Israel and made them heads over the people, chiefs of, of thousands, of hundreds, of fifties, and of tens. Isn't it interesting how we start off this chapter with Moses giving Jethro information that that changes Jethro's perspective. And we end the very same chapter with Jethro giving Moses information that changes Moses' perspective. And I love the fact that we see that from both lenses, especially so jam-packed together. So we can really see as a leader in Moses, and you're a magnificent leader, you are not ever going to be the head enough to where you should stop listening to wise counsel, if that makes sense. Like you should always have trusted individuals around you that you are going to listen to um, and, and glean from them. So that's all of my commentary for chapter 18. Exodus chapter 19, Israel at Mount Sinai. On the third new moon after the people of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, on that day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. They had set out from Rehiphadim and came into the wilderness of Sinai, and they encamped in the wilderness. There Israel encamped before the mountain while Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him out of the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the people of Israel, You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you shall speak to the people of Israel. So Moses came and called the elders of the people and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. And the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am coming to you in a thick cloud that the people may hear when I speak with you and may also believe you forever. When Moses told the words of the people to the Lord, the Lord said to Moses, Go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow and let them wash their garments, and be ready for the third day. For on the third day, the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. And you shall set limits for the people all around, saying, Take care not to go up into the mountain or touch the edge of it. Whoever touches the mountain 
shall be put to death. No hand shall touch him, but he shall be stoned or shot. Whether beast or man, he shall not live. When the trumpet sounds a long blast, they shall come up to the mountain. So Moses went down from the mountain to the people and consecrated the people, and they washed their garments. And he said to them, Be ready for the third day. Do not go near a woman. On the morning of the third day, there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud on the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast, so that all the people in the camp trembled. Then Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God, and they took their stand at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was wrapped in a smoke because the Lord had descended on it in fire. The smoke of it went up like the smoke of a kin, and the whole mountain trembled greatly. And the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder, and Moses spoke, and God answered him in thunder. The Lord came down on Mount Sinai to the top of the mountain. And the Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain, and Moses went up. And the Lord said to Moses, Go down and warn the people, lest they break through to the Lord to look and many of them perish. Also, let the priests who come near to the Lord consecrate themselves, lest the Lord break out against them. And Moses said to the Lord, the people cannot come up to the Mount Sinai, for you yourself warned us, saying, Set limits around the mountain and consecrate it. And the Lord said to him, Go down and come up, bringing Aaron with you. Do not let the priests and the people break through to come up to the Lord, lest he break out against them. So Moses went down to the people and told them, so my commentary for chapter 19 really comes from verse 9 through verse 13. So this is where God is talking to Moses and God is giving guidance to Moses. Um, and he's saying to Moses, go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow and let them wash their garments and be ready for the third day. For on the third day, the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. What I love about that whole structure is that when you go in the presence of God, you can't just come any old type of way. And although I think as humans, you know, we like to just, especially when we're in need, and if you don't really have a relationship with God. If you need something, you'll just go to him and you'll just start praying. And you're like, okay, God, like this is my prayer. Like, can you answer my prayer? And you're just like in a frenzy and in a hurry, but you have 10,000 other things on your mind. You're not really focusing on God and spending time in his word at all. You're more so just there because you need something. And there's this book by Dr. Miles Monroe, The Purpose and Power of Prayer. And it's amazing. Like I genuinely enjoyed reading the book because he really talks through like how to get your heart right, your mind right before you enter the presence of God because he is a king and there is a way in which you need to enter his presence and there's a way that you should get your mind and your get everything about you right before you enter his presence. And so we see here that since God was physically going to be in the presence of the people on Mount Sinai, granted they weren't going to be on the mountain with him, but they were still going to see him coming. They needed to do some physical things to consecrate themselves and ensure that they were ready for his coming. And so I really thought that that was impactful because that's one of the major things that I took from reading Dr. Miles Monroe's book is that when you go into the presence of God, um, in, in modern day and age, just to be like prayer, you have to be prepared. And so that's the main commentary that I got for chapter 19.
Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. I hope you found some value out of this content. If you did, please leave me a rating or a review wherever you are listening. This would mean the absolute world to me. And I'd love to hear from you on social media. Please feel free to reach out on Twitter at His Eternal Word, the number one. And please feel free to visit the website at www.thedailybiblereader.com. And I hope you stay tuned for the next episode.